Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Waller's Wallet and in this video, we're gonna compare the Chase personal trifecta against the Chase business trifecta. But first, if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about credit cards, credit card rewards, and showing you how you can use your points and miles to travel for less. So if that's something that interests you, consider subscribing and turn the notification bell on as well. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps the channel out. Now, the Chase Trifecta is a pretty powerful combination of credit cards, but I thought it would be fun to compare the personal cards to the business cards and see which Trifecta would actually be better. And for the personal Trifecta, we're going to use the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the Chase Freedom Unlimited, and the Chase Freedom Credit Card. And for the business Trifecta, we're going to use the Chase Inc. Preferred, the Chase Inc. Unlimited, and the Chase Inc. Cash. Now, starting off with the sign up bonus, because when it comes to the personal trifecta, you're gonna earn 50,000 points from the Chase Sapphire Reserve, 15,000 points from the Chase Freedom, and up to 60,000 points from the Chase Freedom Unlimited. And in order to earn the full 125,000 ultimate reward points from these bonuses, you would need to spend $24,500. And for the business trifecta, you're gonna earn 80,000 points from the Chase Inc. Preferred, 50,000 points from the Chase Inc. Cash, and 50,000 points for the Chase Inc. Unlimited. And to earn these 180,000 ultimate reward points, you would only need to spend $11,000. And this round isn't even close. The business trifecta takes this round not only for more points, but it also is gonna cost you less than half the spend requirement. Now let's take a look at the bonus restrictions because all the cards here are subjected to the Chase's 524 rule. But Chase business cards don't count towards your 524 status. And even though all of these cards are subjected to the 524 rule, the business cards get a slight advantage here since they're not going to count towards your 524 status as of yet. Now taking a look at the annual fees, the personal trifecta has a total annual fee burden of $450 and that's because the Chase Freedom and the Freedom Unlimited are fee free credit cards. Unless you decide to add an authorized user to your Chase Sapphire Reserve in which that's going to add an additional $75 per authorized user. And the business trifecta has a total annual fee burden of just $95 because the Chase Inc. Cash and Inc. Unlimited are both fee free cards as well. And you have to give this round to the business trifecta here since the annual fee burden is less than the personal trifecta. Now taking a look at the foreign transaction fees, the personal trifecta has the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the business trifecta has the Chase Inc. Preferred and both of those cards have no foreign transaction fees so I'm going to consider this round a draw. Now let's take a look at the earning rates and this is where we see some differences between the trifectas. The personal trifecta is going to earn triple points on all travel and dining, one and a half points on all non-bonus purchases, and then five points per dollar on rotating categories. The business trifecta is going to earn triple points on travel, social media and search engine advertisements, 5x on cell phone, internet and cable, and even office supply stores, double points on dining and gas, and then a point and a half on all non-bonus spending. And a possible trade-off would be to substitute the 5x earnings with the Chase Inc. Cash to add in the Chase Inc. Preferred and earn triple points on your cell phone purchases, but you would also receive cell phone protection as well. And while the Chase Freedom might have a rotating 5x categories, the business trifecta just has overall better earning rates. Both trifectas earn triple points on travel, but the 5x earning rates on internet and cable, office supply stores is a huge category. It's just so easy to take advantage of those offers and really earn a ton of points. And you can see why in an overall Chase Trifecta, business cards are really key to earning a lot of points. The earning rates are just so much better. Now let's take a look at redeeming your points because both of these Trifectas have the ability to transfer to partners at a one to one ratio. But the differences are in the redemptions through the travel portals. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is going to give you the ability to redeem at 1.5 cents per point, while the Chase Inc. Preferred will redeem at just 1.25 cents per point. So you would really need to give this round to the personal trifecta since the portal redemptions are going to cost you fewer points. Now taking a look at the other benefits of the trifectas, the benefits of the personal trifecta really come from the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you're going to receive a $300 travel credit, which if you travel, brings your effective annual fee down to $150. 
you're gonna get a TSA pre-check or global entry credit, and you're also gonna receive unlimited priority pass lounge access for you and up to two guests. And you're also gonna receive travel protection benefits such as trip delay coverage that kicks in after six hours, travel cancellation coverage, primary auto rental coverage for up to $75,000, lost luggage reimbursement, and you'll also receive some shopping benefits from your Chase Sapphire Reserve as well. And when it comes to the business trifecta, most of the benefits come from the Chase Inc. Preferred. The Chase Inc. Preferred is gonna give you trip delay coverage and that kicks in after 12 hours, plus you'll also receive travel cancellation coverage as well. You'll also receive primary auto rental coverage when using it for business use, but it will be secondary if using it for personal use, plus you'll receive up to $600 in cell phone protection as well. Plus the Chase Inc. Preferred does give you some shopping benefits. And when it comes to the benefits, I'm not even sure it's close. The personal trifecta is just a lot stronger than the business trifecta since the Chase Sapphire Reserve has better overall benefits. Now that isn't to say the business trifecta has bad benefits, but it is really hard to compete with lounge access, better travel protections, and even better auto rental coverage. Now, which trifecta is better? If you had to choose between the personal trifecta or a business trifecta, I would go with the business trifecta. The bonuses are far better, the long-term earning rates are greater than the personal trifecta, and you even have a smaller annual fee burden. And even though the benefits are better with the personal trifecta, you still have good travel protection benefits, cell phone protection, and you can still transfer your points to partners at a one-to-one -one ratio. And while it's not perfect, you can still redeem your points to the Chase Travel Portal at 1.25 cents per point. And the Chase business cards currently don't count toward your 524 status, which is always great. So my question to you is, if you had to pick one, either the personal trifecta or the business trifecta, which one are you choosing? Hey, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you know somebody who might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. And if you want to help support the channel, a simple way would be using links on the website or in the description below. And if you like learning about credit cards, points, miles, cashback, or just flat out traveling for less, consider hit the subscribe button down below. And until next time, safe travels and take care.